Hello students and anyone else who may be watching from home, this is Mr. Borges, also known as Zanzolo, and today we're going to be talking about our next part here in Scratch, which is going to be part two of a part three project. So last time we did Space Invaders part one, and there's a video here that you can watch about that and right, the things that we did in part one. Now we're going to continue with that same project that you already started to do Space Invaders Part 2. Part 3 is going to be right here. It's not there yet. We'll be there soon. Okay. Space Invaders Part 2. So let's continue. Part 2 of our Space Invaders project. So here's the video. Well, it's going to be the video that I'm recording right now. It's going to be right here. <clears throat> There's an example of the updated project that has these additional pieces. Your project needs the following things, so please add the following things to your project. A grid of alien invaders, right? There should be at least 15 aliens. There can be more than that in three rows, right? One, two, three rows of aliens. You're going to have at least five columns, at least three rows, but you can have more than that if you choose to. The aliens should all move together towards the edge of the screen the right edge of the screen. Then when they get there, they should move down one step and then go back the other way to the left side of the screen and then go down. And I'll show that in the example right here. You'll have a bullet sprite. I'm, I'm going to create a duplicate of the player's bullet to make the alien's bullet. This bullet sprite has a clone, is going to use clones because there can be more than one on the screen at the time. Right? It's going to go to an alien, one of the alien clones, and move down when shot. So we'll talk about that. You can't, we can't make an exact duplicate of our player shot because um, there's only one of those allowed on the screen at a time, and we didn't use clones for that. But we will duplicate it and then change it into the alien shots, which will use clones because there can be more than one of those coming down at the same time. Then um, shields should get chipped away. When shot by aliens, we were, we're going to pretty much get that for free by duplicating our, our player bullet. That's the alien bullet because our player bullet already does that. Uh, shields should disappear when aliens get that low. So we'll talk about how we're going to do that. <clears throat> but remember, the shields were just stamps. So really, we're just going to erase all at a certain time. We'll use an if block to check if the alien clones have gotten low enough. And the game should end if the aliens, uh, I've, I've put reach the ground in here. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and change this right now. It should be, it's impossible for them to reach the ground if they touch the player. So the game should end if the aliens reach the player. Have to reach the player before they reach the ground. So they never will, they never should ever reach the ground. Okay, anyway. So let me go ahead and show that in this example project that's right here. And you can always click on this. You can click see inside. I've um, been adding comments to this project to show the parts that are new. Right, so this is what we're going to be doing today is writing the code for the alien. And it looks like there's a lot. Don't be intimidated by it. You can understand everything that's in here. I'm going to explain it all step by step. And there's comments that I've added to help guide you through, right? Reminding you about what which things are which. So, but what I want to show you is how this works. So, when I click the green flag, I get <clears throat> rows of aliens right, that are moving along. They do have different costumes. So you can see that their legs are wiggling every time that they take a step. They are randomly shooting, right? And you can see there's more than one of their alien shots on the screen at the same time. If they get any lower, the shields are going to disappear. You'll see that here. Right. Now, right now, I can't hurt them and they can't hurt me. That's going to be part three. We're also going to have to keep track of lives and scores and things like that. <clears throat> if the aliens go any lower, they're going to touch my player and the game ends. Once the game's over, I cannot move. I cannot shoot. The aliens cannot move. The aliens cannot shoot. The game is truly over. Right. So we're going to have to make sure, though, that the code is telling the aliens and the player and the shots that they have to all stop. So that's the big idea. So we're going to come up with come up with those pieces right now. So what I'm going to do, I think that the um, the code that we used last time was this uh, party invaders where I was messing around. I was just to show you all that like, oh, you know, it really doesn't matter. 
Uh, you don't have to use a ship. You don't have to use a bullet. I'm using um, a birthday cake that shoots birthday candles, which is just kind of ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to use this to continue with. Now, the shield, I think, is a little bit thick for this. So what I'm going to do is, and your shields, hey, you might have, you might decide you drew them too big and or too small. I'm just going to click on this, and I'm going to shrink it a little bit. <clears throat> or perhaps that was a lot, depending on your point of view. There we go. All right, so that just gives more room, and I'm accidentally moving my shield right now. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to put it back on center. There we go. And then deselect it so I'm not moving it anymore, and then try shooting through it. So something like that seems pretty good. <clears throat> now I'm kind of shooting through my... Um, my um, shield's faster than I would like, so I think I'm going to go back to the code for the shot and um, see if we can get away with um, having this white. I don't think we can make that much less than it is, but what I think we might be able to do is, what if we change that to zero? That didn't really make quite much of a difference, did it? Yeah, I think it's okay. <clears throat> you can always make these shields thicker and stuff if you want to. Alrighty, so what we're going to do then is we're going to add a new sprite. It's going to have a number of different costumes. And I I did bugs. My last one, but this is more of a party theme, so I think I'm going to use balloons. They're going to be This is going to be balloon invaders. So here's my sprite. Now these are, are uh, right now probably way too big, so I can start looking at them being smaller that might be about the right size but i probably need to be even smaller than that and you know, experiment with that and adjust those as you need to just, that just feels too small though maybe that's all right so i'm going to try that and i'm going to go to the costumes <clears throat> now i do want i do want my um balloons my alien invaders to be able to wiggle a little bit so we're supposed to have three different rows of aliens. I've got three different costumes here and that's fine. I'm going to use all three of them, but I'm going to duplicate blue then duplicate yellow, then duplicate this uh, purplish one here so that I can change some of them. Right. So, and so I want there to be some change or difference between these two. And um, you can do that a number of different ways. You could um, turn it a little bit. Right, that might be the easiest way to do it. So that there's a little bit of a turn to that one, and then maybe turn a little bit of the way the other way to that one. Some of that my balloons are going to walk along. Right, not very sophisticated, perhaps. You could do something different. Like, so for yellow, I could have a normal size one, and then perhaps it's just change the size a little bit. Or something like that. Then we're going to change back and forth. Uh, and I think I'm going to put these all on center so that I have a better idea of what's going on with them all. Where's the center of my spray here? Hmm. It's not clearly. <clears throat> Usually there's a mark inside the sprite that guides you to the center, right? As you can see, though, uh, so we'll use that there. We'll use that one there. And then for these blue ones, I uh, <laughs> don't know what happened to my center. Where did it go? Well, I'm just going to guess the best that I can to get it to be close to the... Oh, it's there. It's just very hard to see because I think it's almost the exact same color. <laughs> It's almost the exact same color as the, um, the little mark in the middle. Anyways, now I've got purple and then something else for purple. So just to be really silly, to so help through the point of what I'm doing here, and these are these are alien invaders anyways, I'm going to flip this one the other way. Right, so this one's actually going to go doop, 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 which is ridiculous, but whatever. So you'll get the idea. So then what I want to do is I want to lay these balloons out in a grid. And each one of them, right, has a different color. So the blue one, I want to use the first blue costume, the first yellow costume, and the first purple costume. So that's the idea. That's where we're going with this. So 
to do this, what we're going to do is at the start, we're going to say when the green flag is clicked, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to that first blue costume that we want to use, which in this case is going to be balloon 1A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a clone of this balloon and then move some amount over and then create a clone again. And we're going to do that in a repeating pattern. So how far over do we move? That's the question. And I don't know the answer to that question yet. So let's go ahead and just create a clone. Right? If I click this, it creates a clone. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see right now my X position is negative 213. I'm going to move to what I think is the next place for a balloon to go, somewhere like around then. Right, so how far was that, right? We can change x by some amount to get close to where we want. Now we can see that, that this sprite is about 75 pixels across, so we can try 75 pixels. Let's see if that's probably not going to be enough, but I don't know, it might be. So what we're gonna do is create clone of myself and then just move. And the reason I'm doing this is to get an idea. See, that was actually further than what I thought. We don't need that. We don't need that much space at all. So, we're gonna put this balloon where we want to start here, and then get a go-to block telling it to start there. When the green flag is clicked, start there. Then we're going to create a clone of myself. We're going to stop this. Create a clone of myself, and then move some amount. And this is just testing, right? I think 75 was too much. I'm trying 50 now. Eh, maybe that's the perfect amount. So this is what I want to do. Create clone of myself and then move by 50. Then we want to do it again and then do it again and then do it again. That's our five. So we're going to do this instruction right here five times. That part should be no problem, right? We get a repeat loop, put that in there and do it five times. I think that that part is pretty straightforward and everybody probably gets it. So if I click the green flag, there we go. Now I know I have six balloons. This is the original. So what I would do then at the end, and we've done this before when we dealt with clones, we tell the original to hide so we don't have to see it anymore. Right? But then when we do that, then all the balloons are hidden, all the clones are hidden because they're just copies. So then we also tell it, okay, when I start as a clone, I want you to show. And hopefully you remember we've done this kind of thing before. Right? So now all my five clones are showing and the original is not showing. All right, that's the big idea. Now what we want to do is, this bit of code right here is how we make a row of our aliens. I'm using balloons. All right, so what we want to do is, we want to go back to that starting position, which was actually just this right here. We want to go back to here, and then go down a little bit. We want to change the Y position. By how much? I don't know. Before we changed it to so the X side, we changed it by 50, and that seemed about right. So let's just try that. We're going to change Y. Send the balloon a little bit down by negative 50. I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and then run another row here. And then it's up to you to decide, did it go down enough? I think maybe quite not quite. So let's go ahead and try negative 60 instead. So I'm going to go ahead and stop everything. So my clones disappear. Start this again. Make a row. Move back to the starting position and then down and then make another row. And I think that that's about right. So if this is confusing at all what I'm doing right now, I'm just feeling out what, what's the right amount? What's the right amount to move over to the side? What's the right amount to move down? Without having to sit around and doing a bunch of guess and check forever, I'm running little bits of the program at a time. So now what I can do is I can connect these two pieces together like this. I can change, I can connect these two pieces together like this, and then I can run this and then run it again and then run it again. Oopsie. Sorry. It's the it's this part piece right here setting Y. This should have been, I want to reset only the X position. I want to set X back to negative 210 and then change Y by another amount. So now what I can do is I can stop this and then start it and then run this. Run it, run it, run it run it however many I wanted to run, I just get a new row. And what's happening is every time I run this, 
I run it one time, then I'm setting the original back to the X position that I wanted it to start at. Let's go ahead and start this over again. So I'm setting the, the original, and I'm going to go ahead and um, have it show, the original show. So I'm doing some setting the original back. It just went to right here. <laughs> now I'm sending it down a little bit and then making another row. Right. So and then we can make another row, send the, um, basically we're sending that balloon down and then we're sending it back to the beginning and then making another row. And so you can send it down one and then over to where we want and then make another row. And that's the big idea. I'm only going to make three rows, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this piece. I'm going to make a row, go down, go back to the beginning and then do it again. I'm going to do all of this three times. And that's the big idea. Um, this is another nested loop. And I'm only doing it three times because I'm going to have three rows. Your numbers might be different than mine. But the idea is now I can connect this all together. I still want to hide my original now, though, and then show it when it stores up as a clone. So now when I run this, you can see I get my whole grid of aliens all at once. Right, they're all showing up. Now, they all still have the same costume, though. So if you need to pause or fast forward or rewind this, please do. Right, This will be a good time maybe to pause and go over what I just said over here about creating this grid of clones. Right, we're hiding the original, so only clones that we're dealing with here. Then, right, so what we did is we wanted to have a blue one and a yellow one and a purple one. So what I'm going to do is every time we resetting the original, I'm also going to change the costume. Next costume. Now I'm actually going to change the costume twice, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to switch not to this one, but to this one for the next row. And then next time, not to this one, but to this one for the next row. And that's why I'm switching costumes twice. So I'm trying to skip over my other costume that I have. So if I run this now, there you go. <clears throat> see how to get all of my, all my aliens, all of my balloons in there. Now what I'm going to basically do is have them switch costumes back and forth while they march over to the right side of the screen. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So... Let's go ahead then and um, continue with that. So what we're going to do then is write some instructions for the clone. So what are you going to do when you start as a clone? We're going to do some stuff, but not forever. So now I'm just kind of thinking ahead a little bit. And we could have added this in part one, but instead of doing a forever loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a repeat until loop. Repeat until the game is over. And, and the real the reason why I'm doing that is because if we use a forever loop, the only way we can stop the forever loop really, well, we don't want to use stop alls or things like that because stop all, you can see if I click this, it makes all my clones disappear. And when you lose, I don't want the clones to disappear. So what we're going to do is, but I also want the, the everything to stop at some point without using stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change all of my repeat, <clears throat> sorry, all my forever loops to repeat until blocks. And what are we going to repeat until? We're going to repeat until the game is over. So I'm going to make a new special variable just to keep track of if the game is over. I'm even going to call it, is the game over? That's the name of my variable. And that's a yes or no question. So when we first start out, is the game over? No. So we're going to set, is the game over to no. And what we're going to do is at some point later on, we're going to set the game over to be yes. <laughs> and then this loop is going to keep repeating until, until what? Until is the game over is equal to yes. Then this loop is going to stop. But it won't stop the whole project so my clones won't disappear. And that's the big idea. So I'm actually going to borrow this into <clears throat> this other bit of code right here. Whoopsie. Whoa, what was that? I am going to, oh, that was interesting. I'm going to borrow this into this other bit of code here. Huh. The reason why is because I already had a forever loop here too. But when the game's over, I don't want the player to be able to move like this anymore. So I don't want them to move like that forever. Not forever. 
We want them to repeat, keep repeating that until the game is over. So now when the game is running, yes, they can do that. And then at some point in the future, something is going to set the game over to yes, the game is over. So right now, yeah, I can move back and forth. But once the game is over, I won't be able to move back and forth anymore. And that's the big idea. <clears throat> so um, there's no forever loops in this block, so it's not a problem. There's no forever loops in this block, so it's not a problem. So you don't have any more forever blocks anymore. And, the, and when later, if I'm going to do forever lock, I'm going to do these instead for, for this project. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to repeat these instructions until the game is over. We're going to have the alien. And actually, as I'm looking at this, I think my, my aliens are a little bit too spaced out. I'm actually going to change this number. Instead of going down by a negative 60, I think that's way too much. I'm going to put, change this to negative 40 in an attempt to sort of crowd my balloons way together more. Although it's <clears throat> kind of seeming a little bit too crowded now. I don't know. Space is an issue, and it's something you have to think about uh, with Space Invaders, LOL. All right, something like that, maybe. I might end up moving also these um, shield down a little bit further, even. Just to sort of give myself as much room as possible. Maybe something like this. Okay. All righty, so... What are these aliens going to be doing? We're going to have them move. We want to have them start out always facing this way. So that's part of resetting your aliens. I want all my clones, once they get born, I want them all to be pointing in the same direction. And then I want them all to show. And then I want them all to repeat some stuff till the game is over. What are they going to do? They're going to move. <clears throat> so I'm going to have them move a few steps. <clears throat> you can see on the disc off the screen, and that's not what we want them to do. So what we need to do is move a few steps, and then <clears throat> and then I want them to change costume. So it's going to be move a few switch, move a few steps, change your costume, move a few steps again, and then not change your costume again. I need you to change your costume back. So changing your costume one is something we've done before. It just changes your costume down. Changing your costume back is something we've never done before. And um, it's there's a trick to doing it, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, we're going to set costume to a specific costume, right? So one of our choices then here under looks. Instead of next costume, we can switch costume to a certain one. But I don't know which one it's going to be. It's different for each balloon, for each rows of balloons. What we want to do is we want to switch the costume to the current costume minus one. And the current costume we can get from this costume number. Now, there are clones, and so each one of them is going to have a different costume, but they all have a costume number. And we can set their costume to whatever their current costume number is minus one which is kind of a weird idea, but it's a way to subtract one from their costume number. It's a way to send them back one costume. And that's that's a funny idea, to switch the costume to their costume idea minus one. It's a really useful thing to do. Now, I don't want them to just do this as fast as they possibly can, so I'm also going to throw some weight block in here. So every time before you move, do a little weight. <clears throat> we'll also play a little sound. I'm going to add that in a moment. Okay, so... Right, but then as you can see, as, we, as soon as we start this, then here we go. All of our aliens, they're all they're all moving along in their own time. And they're kind of moving together. Chip, 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 chip. So what we need to do is we need to write some instruction then for them to check when you get to the edge of the screen. So that's, that's when you can see that they're getting to the edge of the screen there. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the X position of any single one of those clones, of any of them, if the X position of it is ever greater than, we could use equal, but the numbers might not come out exactly equal. We're taking 10, 10 steps. 
So you might be at 101 and then you go to 111 and then you go to 121, you might never be at 120. So that's why it's safer to just check if you're greater than something, some threshold. For greater than some threshold, let's just say, um, you know, you can you can get a, an estimate of that by um, if you're not sure, you can always show have the original show again, and then just sort of move it over here. Like when it gets to where X is around two eighteen, two twenty. Let's try when it gets to about two twenty. So if X position is ever greater than two twenty, what do we want to do? We want to send a message to all the clones. I could just tell that one single clone. Here, let's just try it that way so I can show you. We I could just tell that one specific clone to do a 180. And then um, move down a little bit. That would be to change Y by some amount. And before we did negative 50, so let's do negative 50 again. And then um, take a step over to the left again, which would be to go ahead and move another 10 steps. <clears throat> so we could do that, but what's gonna happen if I run this, and you'll see, is the balloons aren't gonna all move together. They're gonna get to the edge, and they're kind of going a little bit slow right now, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit. But they're all gonna get to the edge, then they're going to, one at a time, flop over to go the other way, flop over to go the other way. As they touch the wall themselves, only they themselves flop back over to go the other way, which is um, not really what we want. What we want is when any one of the clones, exposition is greater than 220, we want all of the clones at the same time to do this stuff. So what we can do is we can send them all a message. We still want to check if any of the clones is ever greater than 220 in its exposition. And if it is, we're gonna send it a message. So we're gonna send a message that tells all of the clones to uh, turn around or whatever, name this whatever you want, turn around. Okay. Then we can say, when I receive the message, turn around. And all the clones will do this at the same time. So. Right, so we're flopping around to our silly costumes, but once we get to the end, they all come back up over to go the other way. Now, as you can see, they all flipped up upside down. Now, these ones were supposed to flip upside down, but that wasn't the plan for all of them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move, I'm going to have them move not quite so far down because I want it to take a while. I don't want the game to be over too quickly. So I'm going to have them move down half as much, negative 25. And then, so my balloons don't flop upside down, I'm going to set the rotation style, which is a block we've talked about before, right? which is a looks block called set rotation style. And um, I'm surprised that I'm not seeing it. Set. Did they remove that block? Here they may have because they were talking about removing it. They may, they may have removed it so it's not a block anymore, but I, I'd be disappointed if they did that. But I don't see it. So what we might have to do then is for set rotation style, it's one of the things they were talking about doing for a while under here, under direction, is instead of having it be a block about how it being something you could control in here. So right all around, left, right, and do not rotate. And we want left, right. Although I'm really surprised that I'm just not seeing set rotation style here. It was a looks block, wasn't it? No, I'm sorry, it was a motion block. There it is, set rotation style. I'm losing my mind. There it is. You can actually control it different ways though, set rotation style. And I'm gonna hide this as the game over. So you can see all my aliens are moving together. And then you get to the other side and they don't do anything because I didn't do anything for that side. We've only written instructions for this side. So I want them to also do something like this for the other side. So I could just make another if block. We could. This is a place where we could use an or block and we've talked about those before. I think it's a good place to go ahead and use an or block now. There's two different times we wanna send this message. We want to send the message if x position is greater than 220 or there's two times so i can put an or block in there and i can put two things inside here or another time that we would want to do it is if the 
x position is less than negative 220. The x position of any of the sprites is less than negative 220. And then we can try that out. If these numbers aren't what I want them to be, I can always change them. I'm looking to see. That's about the right place. If I wanted to go further over to the right, I can make this number higher. Now I'm checking this side. I want them to go a little bit further over to the left, so I'm going to make this number a little bit lower, negative 230. And I can try that. It's something like that, and I think that's about right. I'm going to pop over the other way. And they're going to pop back over the other way. All right, so it's working pretty good. And they're just going to keep going that way. Now there's other things that are supposed to happen, right? So right now they've touched the shields. The shields should disappear. So we're going to check that. We're going to have an instruction that tells all the clones, okay, yeah, when you start as a clone, there's other things for you to check. We're going to check if, if touching that color we're doing the shields by color, right? So if, whoopsie, if touching that specific exact color of our shield, what are we gonna do? We're gonna erase all. If any of the sprites, if any of the aliens are ever touching that, we're just gonna erase all the shields right then. So there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out, make sure that it's working the way that we think it should. And then we're gonna do another check to say if any of the aliens are touching the cake, that should also end the game. So we should be able to see this in just a moment here. The shields should disappear. Yep, there they go. So the aliens have wrecked the shields. And then they might get away one more time there. And then we're going to do another check that says if touching cake, which is our player, if touching cake, what are we going to do? We're not going to stop all, though, because if we stop all, that makes our balloons disappear. I don't want them to disappear. I want them to be able to see how they lost. So what we're going to do is that's where we set the game to be over. Is the game over? Is the game over? That's where we set is the game over to yes. Yes. We're going to put that also inside of our forever loop. As you can see, my aliens are just going to keep going forever like that. So... I'm going to speed this up even more by having there be no wait in here just so that we can test this out faster. So the shields disappear and then we touch the we touch the cake and the game was over. So that's, that's the big idea. Now, it, it partly messed up because it was trying to go so fast. And you can see, <coughs> especially when it's going so fast like this, the aliens are getting all spread out a little bit more than we wanted. And so one way that we can stop that we don't actually want the aliens to start doing this as soon as they're born as clones. We want them to start doing all of this stuff after all the clones have been spawned. So what we want to do is we want to 100% finish making this grid and then have this happen. So what we can do is we can add another message for that. Right? So I'm going to broadcast a message. I'm just going to call this to um, aliens ready. Question mark, are they, the aliens, or let's just call it aliens are ready. That's just sending the message. The aliens are ready. When the aliens are ready, we're going to say, okay, when I receive aliens are ready, that's when we're going to start doing all these things. All right, so let me can go ahead and test, test this out. <clears throat> As you can see that my original, it did change the behavior of that because now the originals are showing. We're going to have to change that. We still do need that one when I start as a clone block to give a special message just to the clones to show so that the original doesn't hide. So I, I shouldn't have thrown that whole thing away. There we go. And it's still super fast mode just um, to sort of show how this is working. But there we go. Right. So now it's stopped. I can't move my player back and forth. I can still shoot, which I shouldn't be able to shoot right now because the game is over. So let's just fix that one piece there. It has to do with the bullet. So when space is pressed, did we do this stuff? Well, maybe not. We need to check. We need to check if the game is over. So if if 
if is the game over equals no, that means the game is not over, then yeah, then we want to shoot. But once the game over equals yes, we shouldn't be able to shoot anymore. So right now I cannot shoot because the game is over. Right now I can shoot, no problemo. Nothing happens when I shoot the balloons. Balloons can't shoot yet. We're going to add that part in just a second. But when it touches me, I can't shoot anymore. So there we go. So that's the big idea about the alien. I know there's kind of a lot of pieces in here that we just wrote about the aliens and everything that they're doing. But you can always pa pause and fast forward and rewind this or go back and look at the example, the main example that I put in class because there's comments that explain what each one of these things are and why they're here and what they're doing. Okay, so last bit to do then would be for the, um, the alien shot. And so uh, I'm going to rename this. This is the player shot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it. Right? And let's see. I'm going to then... We're going to do is it's not controlled by space. This doesn't happen when we push space. This is something that the alien chooses to do. And if the alien chooses to make a clone, what are we going to do? We're still going to go somewhere, but we're not going to go to the cake. All the rest of these things are similar, except we also we want the shots to go down instead of up. So we're going to have them change by negative. I'm going to change this to negative 30. I'm going to change this also to, right now it's set to zero. Let's see if we can leave it that way. It's probably fine, right? And the costumes and everything else look pretty good. But what we're going to do is we're going to make these as clones now. So instead of stopping the script, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this clone. And that's the big idea. This is another place where, um, yeah, we're telling it to hide, but when we get to the end like that, we can also tell the clone to delete itself. Okay, so that would be when it gets to the ground, although we're going to probably have to change this number of repeats that it does anyway. So <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to have the aliens. We've done this before also. We're going to have the aliens pick a random number. And then that alien is going to be the one that shoots the shot. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if some random number has happened. We're going to check if our random number is equal to. We're going to choose if our random number is equal to something else. Right? Something like this. Maybe 1 in 100. If our random number, which we want in 100, is equal to 1, what we're going to do is we're going to create a clone. We're going to create a clone, not of myself, of the alien shot, right? Which is, I called it player shot two. I probably should have renamed this one to alien, alien shot, right? So there we go. Then what we're going to do is, yeah, this is going to go inside of our big loop here for the aliens. And we're going to check if a random number equals one, then we're going to create a clone. And then what are we going to do? Well, we could just send this to the alien, which in our case is the balloon. But I want you to see what happens if we try this. What ends up happening? We just still need to have when I start as a clone here, when I start as a clone. So what ends up happening is it's just the it's just right now the original is the only thing here. I gotta slow this down so that we can see what's happening. Point five. It's just the original, which happens to be right here, and it's not showing right now. Let's go ahead and tell it to show. The original is the only thing that's shooting, and it's not shooting very often, so we can't really see them. Let's tell it to shoot much more often. You can see that the, it's only the original that's actually shooting. <laughs> it's ruining my barrier, down, my ground down here. <coughs> that's funny because I picked the same color for the ground. I'll change that. But, right, I don't want the original to be doing anything. In fact, I don't even want the original down here. I don't want the game to stop if the original touches the cake. I don't want the original to do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and tell the original to hide again. But what I'm going to do now is I don't want the here. I don't want to go to the balloon. 
What I want to do is I want to go to a certain exact place. I want to go to the clone that summoned me. I want to go to the, sorry, the alien clone that summoned me, that shot me. That's where I need to go. So what are those coordinates? I don't know those. They're going to be different all the time. And those clones are moving too. And there's 15 of them. So what I need to do is I need the clone to tell me where it is. <clears throat> so we can do that with a couple of variables. I'm just going to make a variable called balloon x. Balloon, whoopsie. Balloon x. Another one called... Balloon Y. And what we're going to do is those are two variables. We're going to set them both. So before we create this clone of the alien shot, we're going to set Balloon X. We're going to set Balloon Y. We're going to set them to the X position and the Y position of the clone that's doing it. So all the clones are doing this. And one of them is going to get a 1 and is going to try to summon a clone, try to summon a bullet. And when it does, it's going to pick its own X position and Y position and then create the clone. So then what we're going to do is when the clone gets born, it's supposed to go someplace. Where is it going to go? I can't pick X position or Y position, but I can pick the balloons X position that I just saved and the balloons Y position that I just saved. And those are going to be changing all the time. I'm going to leave that up here so you can see that. Those numbers are going to be changing all the time. As you can see, they are changing all the time because there's 15 different balloons and they're changing their positions all the time. And so that's fine, but that's how that works. Right. So then you can decide, it's going to be up to you, is that too many alien shots or is it not enough alien shots? So if that's too many alien shots, you can change it. If it's not enough, you can change it. If they're falling too fast, I think that they definitely are. I'm going to change this to more like negative 10 or something to make that way more fair. And I know they're not doing anything yet. Now, they're actually, they're also, they're supposed to disappear when that happens. So let's go, let's fix that too. So when they're touching the color purple, they're supposed to switch their costume and then stamp themselves and delete themselves. And I think their costume is going, is way too low. Yeah, right. So the candle ends right on the center and this is ending quite a bit. Whoopsie. I wish I hadn't moved that and do that. I'm going to drag this up to around just a little bit more than that. There we go. If you need help with getting your shots to chip away at your um, barrier, though, please do ask me for help about that. That's something I want to help you with. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the ground right now. I didn't really realize, <laughs> I didn't really think about how that was going to potentially be a problem, <laughs> but uh, I can see that it definitely was. All right. So this is about it then, right? So for part two, we've got our aliens. They're moving together in a grid. When they get to the edge, they're moving down and going back the other way. Now we don't need this balloon X and balloon Y to be showing all the time. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Then they're also shooting they're also shooting back, and then they can shoot, and I can shoot. Now, right now, the shots aren't doing anything. I think my shots are moving way too fast, too. I want to change that to 10. Right now, the shots aren't doing anything. That's what we're going to be adding in the next piece. We're going to be adding a part that makes it so that um, when the... When, when, the, when the balloons get shot or when the cake gets shot, something happens, right? If I shoot a balloon, the balloon should disappear. When I shoot a balloon, the balloon should disappear and uh, I should get points. When the aliens shoot me, I should lose a life and have to and have to use another life. And then part of what's going on, did you notice how quickly the shields disappeared? The shields are disappearing way too soon. I'm going to show you that last bit, the reason why that's happening. Show. I think the reason why it's happening is because the original, which is right there, is, um, yeah, the original right there is touching the balloon. Now, the original, the original, which is just this, isn't really doing anything. We don't want it to be doing anything. I'm telling it to hide anyway. But what I'm going to do is 
this little extra piece, I'm gonna tell it to go way up to the top of the screen. Way up to the top of the screen anyway when it's done. So then that way, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. That way, now if I click show, so we can see where is that original, it's way up there. So it's not gonna be messing with anything anymore. I don't have to worry about it accidentally touching the barriers or accidentally touching the cake and making my game end. <clears throat> Alrighty though, so that, that, I know it's a lot of pieces folks, and this is kind of kind of a medium long video. It's kind of a medium, it's a, it's a, it's a medium complicated project. And that's why it's broken into three parts. So if you have any questions about it, please watch this video again. Pause, fast forward, and rewind. Please go back to the example project that's right here that you can click see inside and actually see my code or ask me for help for any pieces that aren't working correctly. Because it's, it's usually, if you do your best to get this going and it's not going, it's probably something little. It's probably something about either the costumes, the way we did this costume trick to chip away at the shields or it's something you know or it's probably something about these other trick that we've used about sending messages to all the clones at the same time and i can help you find those problems Alrighty, folks so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time bye